Hello and welcome to Startup TV. We're here in Birmingham with a young man you might not recognise, but a name you might do. It's Louis Barnett. Hello, Louis. Hello. And Louis is famous for... Chocolate. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, Louis, perhaps for those of us uh, who aren't quite familiar with your story, perhaps you could just enlighten us as to what this chocolate is. Okay, I'll, I'll try, and, try and keep it brief. <laughs> um, left, left school at 11 years old, diagnosed with dyslexia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia and short-term memory loss syndrome. Goodness, okay. Um, home education, went into making cakes, family and friends, started the chocolate business, supplied local businesses, then by the age of 13, youngest ever supplied to Waitrose, 14 Sainsbury's, 15 Selfridges. Um, so I started out really just making for family and friends and then it turned into a real passion and a hobby. Goodness, and how old are you now? 19. 19 so years seven, old. Seven years this September. Goodness me, and you've achieved all of that in that short period of time. Yeah. So what, what made that happen then? I mean, what was the key, what was the key thing that, that you felt um, drove you on to the Well, I, th I think for, for me the first thing was I, I had no other choice, you know, really. I left school, I'd got nothing else going on, mm. so as soon as this opportunity came along I just threw myself into it. Mm. Uh, so it wasn't really a case of as much a choice for me, it was more a case of, well, I've got to do something and this is a fantastic opportunity to use. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that was a, the initial driving force, but I've always been quite quite a, a, an odd child and I was always interested in the uh, f deeper side of, of products. I've always been a very big foodie fan and actually chocolate is the most complex ingredient on the planet. So as soon as I started doing a bit of research, it, it really started to interest me. Right, okay. So you say you're a bit of a foodie. What else do you cook? Is it just chocolate or are you a bit no, of a No, no, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a chef now. So yeah. I, I, I cook all sorts. I, I cook in the home, cook for family and friends. Yeah. Um, I, I used to cook a lot for, for sort of family when I was younger. I remember I, I made a, a cheese souffle when I was about nine or ten years old, <laughs> creme brulee, sort of seven, eight. So <laughs> That's incredible. I've, um, uh, and, you know, being being in this area, sort of outside Birmingham, so yeah. we've got a lot of food products around us. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you've got a lovely place to do it in as well, haven't you? Yeah, you know, yeah. Nice the, the cooker here is not that great, but not, um, no, oh, it's right. not fantastic. And you've got your, your kind of chiller next door for all your chocolate bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah you've definitely. You've got a nice little setup. <laughs> and of course, you're off to Mexico um, in a few in a few days. Yes, um, yeah, about, about 20, 23, 24 days. So what what... Why move to Mexico to do all this kind of chocolate stuff? Well, well really what was sort of happening, the business was growing quite well. As I said, I was dealing with multiples. And then by, um, it's about two years ago now, two and a half years, you remember the introduction, that I, I'm not going to name names, but there was a very large high street chocolate brand that came out, really started to launch themselves. They, they grew in the marketplace very quickly. Mm. And it, it destabilised the chocolate industry a lot, so we started to lose a lot of sales in the UK. I fell out with Sainsbury's and Waitrose um, over over quality issues. Not not my quality wasn't high enough, but but they didn't really care. Um, so so I really sort of, if you like moved on to new pastures. I started mm -hmm. to look at things like the UK trade and investment passport to export programmes. Mm -hmm. And started to really decide that, you know, do you know what, there's, there's a big world out there and if I'm not doing that well in the UK, I want to grow my business and it doesn't necessarily just have to happen here. Absolutely. And so um, I, I read uh, on, your, on your website something about uh, the more you investigated into how chocolate is being made, you discovered the use of palm oil. Yes, um, yeah, ab effect. absolutely. Tell us a little bit about what you found out and what, how that informed your... Well, uh, basically when, when I started, I, used to, I did a lot of research into all my ingredients, I sourced it all myself, and a lot of the, let's say, base products, the flavour oils, things like that, had this palm oil ingredient mm. in. Now, I was probably only started about six months, didn't really understand what it was, so I went away, did a bit of research about it. Now, these are figures all the way back from 2005. At that time, in 2005, the Indonesian rainforest, because that's where it's pretty much solely produced, or at least was back then, was being destroyed at a rate of six football pitches worth of rainforest every minute of every day. So fr from that instant piece of information, not only did I decide that I wasn't going to use it, I was the first product on the supermarket shelves all the way back in 2007 to have no hydrogenated vegetable because we all remember that little um, little problem a couple of years ago and also with no palm oil. But on top of that, I decided I wanted to do something about it. I wanted to raise awareness and raise money for charities that worked with palm oil. That's amazing. So that's a really great, uh, great thing that you've done, especially at 19 years old. <laughs> I mean, only as the, the business grows forward, um, I'm assuming you'll do lots more by way. Yeah, of absolutely. I mean, the, the charity work grew 
a lot uh, very, very quickly went from uh, a very small group of charities to then grew across the world to different conservation organisations, everything from uh, lions, tigers, owls, elephants, marine conservation. And so do you consider yourself now then more of a chocolatier or more of a conservationist? Are they kind of 50-50? I, I think they go hand in hand and yeah. I think they should do. Uh, and I think for, for me as a chocolatier really to understand my world and, and as a young person, I think what, what really my generation doesn't realise is that however conservation has been sold to us in the past, the global warming debate, we have such a small amount of time to mm. make a difference. We've got no choice, uh, and that's it. I mean, to, to give you an example, with the palm oil debate also comes the orangutans. Now, the Indonesian rainforest is the only natural habitat for orangutans. If we're very, very, very lucky, we've got three or four years saving from complete extinction. Uh, wow. uh, you know, you're talking three or four years' time. We, we're all going to be sitting there. Uh, and you talk about elephants, we've got 10 years. You talk about lions, we've probably got 9 or 10 years if we're lucky. So all of these animals, we have such a small amount of time to make a difference. And mm. I'm a young guy, I'm doing well. Why shouldn't I do something to help my world? Absolutely. Well, that's wonderful to hear. So buying <laughs> this chocolate will go somewhere. Yes, it help. will. Absolutely. <laughs> that's great. Well, speaking of the chocolate, shall we give some a little bit yeah, of a Yeah, go, go ahead. What have we got here then? We've got a dark chocolate and ginger. Okay. And that's with coca nibs. Yeah, that's that one. Okay. Feel free. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do eat quite a bit. So <laughs> I, I had some this morning for breakfast. So it's a dark cocoa. Yeah, it's 70% Great. dark chocolate. I can really taste the 70%. What's the other 30? No, I'm really... <laughs> no that's really it's, nice. It's wow. th this, this year, because when, when I blend the chocolate every year, it's made up of, of different places. So basically, every year, much like wine changes, hmm. cocoa does. So every year, oh, it's right. from different locations around the world. Now, predominantly this year, this is a South American blend. That's why you get that very sort of fruity, very rich, hmm. but it shouldn't be too bitter. If a dark chocolate's bitter, it hasn't been made properly. Wow. So you're very, very not. Are you still sort of growing your uh, understanding of... Because you're only 19, I find that so hard to believe <laughs> because you speak so well on the subject. But are you still learning then? Yeah, well, it? I mean, you, you never stop learning because there's always new research. I mean, I started doing my chocolate training about the age of 14. I got sponsored by the world's largest chocolate company to, to train in their academies. Uh, and by the age of 16, I was one of U Europe's most qualified chocolatiers. So I, because I, I set out and said, well, you know, if I'm going to stand here behind my product, I have to know what I'm talking about. I think mm. that's that's one thing that I say to a lot of small businesses, you know, know your stuff, not knowledge is power. Yeah. And especially when it comes to things like food or specialist industries, chocolate is such a complex ingredient. I really had to know, know what I was talking about. So I did everything from chocolate tempering, which is the very basic stuff, right up to chocolate sculpturing, and then eventually went on to the molecular side of chocolate. Chocolate sculpturing? Yeah. And is that, explain that, I'm not familiar with that phrase. Um, as, as it sounds, you, you sculpture with chocolate. So there's there's a, couple, a couple of different techniques to use. There's one which is you build the sculpture out. Yeah. So basically you use a very... A uh, very specialised paste technique to turn it basically into Play-Doh. Oh, right. And then you construct the sculpture or you can carve it out of a block, much like other sculptures are done. Oh, I see. Um, but, oh. but then there's, there's sculptures and showpieces. So showpiece can be two or three metres high and can be sort of a metre wide. So wow. you can have lots of different elements on it and usually they're themed for something. So it might be Christmas, it might be Valentine's, oh, it might be Easter. Oh, wow. That's one way to please the missus, though. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs>